Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello, Student Bible with Joe McGee. We're going from Genesis to Revelation in chronological order as it happened. Now, I know I've mentioned this several times, but the Bible is not written uh, in chronological order. It's written from the longest book to the shortest book. I've mentioned before that Genesis covers some 2,500 years. And so a lot of time in there. So, uh, which, you know, you go all the way down to get to the book of June, which is just not even got chapters. So it goes from the longest book all the way down to the shortest book, but it is not in chronological order. Now they've written Bibles today. You can go to your Bible bookstore and you can buy, Hey, can I get a Bible written in chronological order as it happened? And they say, yeah, so they've been printed and published. So it's been good to get one. It'd be entertaining to find out. Oh, that's why this happened. Oh, that's when this happened. This when this happened. So we're in the book of first Samuel, it's an incredible story. And so they made some movies about this one too. So we're in the book of first Samuel, uh, chapter one, verse one, there was a man named Elkanah who lived in Ramah in the region of Zub in the hill country of Ephraim. He was the son of Jerome, son of Eli, son of Toho, son of Ephraim. He had two wives, Hannah and Peniel. Peniel had children. Hannah did not. Each year, Elkanah would travel to Shiloh to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of heaven's armies at the tabernacle. The priest of the Lord at that time had two sons named uh, uh, Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas. On the days of Elkanah presented their sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to Pena and to each of his children. And though he loved Hannah, he would give her only one choice portion because the Lord had given her no children. So Peniah would taunt Hannah and make fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. Year after year was the same. Peniah would taunt Hannah when they would come to the tabernacle. Each time Hannah would be reduced to tears, would not even want to eat. Or say, why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. Why aren't you eating? Why are you downhearted just because you have no children? You have me. Isn't that better than having 10 sons? <laughs> and braggadocious husband. Once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli, the priest, was sitting in his customary place inside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was deeply anguished, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you look down on my sorrow and answer my prayer, give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours his entire life. And as a sign that has been dedicated to the Lord, he, his hair will never be cut. As she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her, seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound. He thought she had been drinking. Must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine. Verse 15. Oh, no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger. I'm very discouraged. I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I am wicked woman. I'm a wicked woman. For I've been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the Lord, a God of Israel, grant you requests that you have asked of him. Oh, thank you, she replied. And she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. Verse 19. The entire family got up early the next morning and went to worship the Lord once more. Then they returned home to Ramah. When I slept with Hannah, the Lord remembered his plan. And in due time, she gave birth to a son, and she named him Samuel, for she said, I asked the Lord for him. The next year, Elk and his family went to the annual trip to sacrifice to the Lord to keep his vow. But Hannah did not go. She told her husband, wait until the boy is weaned, then I will take him up to the tabernacle and leave him there to the Lord to serve the Lord permanently. Whatever you think is best, Elk and I agreed. So that time she stayed. And Lord, may the Lord help you uh, keep your promise. So she stayed home and nursed the boy until he was weaned. Now, sometimes in Jewish history, that could be two, three, four years of age. When the child was weaned, Hannah took him to the tabernacle in Shiloh. They brought him there with a three-year-old bull for the sacrifice and a basket of flour and some wine. After the sacrifice and the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? Hannah asked. I'm the very woman who stood here several years ago praying to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy. 
and he granted my request. Now I'm giving him to the Lord, and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. And they worshiped the Lord together. Chapter 2. Hannah prayed. My heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer for my enemies. I rejoice because you have rescued me. No one is holy like the Lord. There's no one besides you. There's no rock like our God. Stop acting so proud and haughty. Don't speak with such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows what you have done. He will judge your actions. The bow, the bow of the mighty is now broken. But those who have stumbled are now strong. And those who are well fed are now starving. And those who are starving are now very full. The childless woman has now seven children. And the woman with many children wastes away. The Lord gives both death and life. He brings some down to the grave, but raises others up. The Lord makes some poor, but others rich. He brings uh, some down. He lifts others up. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among places and among princes. He placed them in seats of honor, for the earth is the Lord's, and he has all the world in order. He will protect the faithful ones, but the wicked will disappear in darkness. No one will succeed by strength alone. Those who fight the Lord will be shattered. He thunders against them from heaven. The Lord judges throughout the earth. He gives power to the king, increases the strength of his anointed one. Then Elka returned to Ramah uh, with, uh, without Samuel, and the boy served the Lord, assisting the priest Eli. That's a great story. So you got this kid, this woman wants this baby. She couldn't have a baby. She goes to the priest. Priest gets a request. She goes back home. Finally, she gets pregnant. She has the boy. But the next year when they went to the Tabernacle every year, she didn't go. She said, I want to stay here, nurse the boy, because I promised to give him to God. So when he's weaned, I will then go back to the Tabernacle with you, and I will give him to God, which is what exactly what's happened. So we're going to pick this up next time. It's a fascinating story about the promises of God, how God remains true to his word. God does not lie. He tells the truth every time. So tune in next time. We'll pick it up right here. God bless, guys. Thanks for listening. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.